are good to go. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to be here with Brian today. Brian, you have so much expertise. I don't even know where to start when it comes to it. I approached you asking for staging during the holidays. So obviously staging, you know, all year round, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the holiday aspect, but a wealth of knowledge. I'm really excited to share that with everybody watching. Um, do you mind introducing your brand, your brokerage and your design studio? Hi, I am Brian Laird. I am with Stone and Story Real Estate Group in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, we started out as a team with a different company and we uh, we we became our own brokerage. Um, team of about 10 for the first full year. It's been We're ending the first full year of that brokerage. Um, we're still number one in our market. We, um, here in Northeast Kansas, what else? We, uh, just added another team for growth that came to us from a different brokerage up North. So we're, we're expanding to the North here. Um, the topic is awesome. And on point, we just were featured in a local magazine with the same. Oh my gosh, hold it up. I, I need a picture of that one then for sure. But... Story line of decorating for the holidays. And we planned ahead and we did this back in November. I had to set up Christmas vignettes in my own home, if I can find the story, um, in order to get the shots done in time for the magazine. But it's a local thing that goes out to uh, people here, but there it was. And you yeah, the cover. You not just I, got a story, you got the cover. That's not us on the cover, that's a different family. We're deep in. You're deep in. <laughs> stage, stage to sell. So the topic is uh, uh, valid uh, when you asked at just the right time when we had just yeah. considered this. That's awesome. So I am really happy that you are here. So staging during the holidays and we are, you know, right now December is here. So, you know, probably people already have staged, but if somebody's in the boat, maybe next year, maybe it's going to be towards the end of the year. I think they're going to find massive, massive value by you sharing what you guys do to position the homes in a way like no other company can do in the marketplace. So the big question I always ask is Christmas tree. Yes, no, what's your take on a Christmas tree when it comes to selling your home? Yes, you can. Um, every home is different. Every story is different. You have to live in the house while you're there, while it's on the market, but you're also moving. So why are you going to unpack everything you've got boxed up in the attic to put out all over the house? So yes, a Christmas tree is fine, especially if you have kids um, in the house. We recommend, if you can, not going as big, you know, do a smaller, you know, you know, we're all trying to sell big spaces and declutter and all that. So don't fill up all that space because you have to move all your furniture all into the corner to get the tree over there. A smaller tree, a taller, skinnier tree. Um, don't unpack all the ornaments. You can unpack half of them to get on the tree and just keeping it simple. Um, don't put the train around it at the bottom this year. Save that for the new house. Um, just keeping it simple and clean looking like we all advised all year long. Makes sense. Do you have a preference on light colors? Because I know, so I'm, I'm one of those people with a colorful tree because I got small kids, you know, yeah. so they like the lights and the colors, but... Do you prefer colored over white or do you not care which one is up? So throughout um, this process, I've, I've, we've kept it simple in our staging. Um, and most of the time I do and white lights are what I use. I'll, I'll use red lights, white and red. My tree then is a different story because I do white and then I add a string of green and a string of red and then another string that's got some other color. So it kind of- uh, Ties it together. It, tie, it ties it together, but that's where I leave my color. So the rest of the house kind of matches itself and is wintry and Christmassy with white lights, but then the tree has the color on it for me in my household. There's no right or wrong. Right. That's awesome. So obviously Christmas trees, you covered ornaments already. Um, I guess when it comes time to decorating, a lot of people love the decoration outside, right? Um, I'm a blow up person. I am going to out myself, but I'm not selling my house. But if I was to sell my house, can I put up my blow ups? I would say no, not this year. Um, you want Again, you want to keep it clean and simple, not distract from the front and the curb appeal. Um, I wouldn't put them in the front of the house this year. Got it. And you know what, just talking about that too, or from an agent perspective, 
if you have clients that have small kids and you know you tell them no we're not going to make your house look like the gingerbread house like we usually do if you come from an age and value standpoint what if you just know like an awesome five six seven houses in the area that are decorated you know to the ninth and you just give that family a list and say, hey, here is you know some really cool houses. I know your kids look forward to the Christmas lights. Maybe you can just take a drive by them. Um, we promise we make it as quick and hassle-free for you. But it's a nice little acknowledgement of you know don't go without it. Just go without it at your house for the year. This one time, you have to work with the kids, and if the agent has access to the kids, you have to kind of become their bestie and kind of recommend those kind of things. We actually, um, Sun Story actually sponsors one of those light shows on one of the houses. So we list on our Facebook page where you can go see them and we'll go do videos in front of them. Um, so people know where to take their families to see these light shows. They're, they're in every community. You shouldn't have a hard time finding them. There's usually a website um, that lists them. Um, but that's a great thing to do for the family to keep the kids active. Um, there's uh, lots of things. Just make sure you include the kids into why they're missing out and giving them other things to distract them, I suppose. Here you go. So we talked a little bit about the front yard. Let's go into your front door because the front door is where I always hear people say, you know what, this is where your clients really start looking because here's the agent fumbling with a key, right? Trying to get the log, having big heavy gloves on um, and they start looking around, right? So we always want this first impression at the front door being like, oh, this house is well maintained, it's beautiful. What's your opinion on like decor for the holidays when it comes to the front door entryway? We just uh, recommend keeping it as simple as possible. A lot of times a wreath or anything can be, you just have to make sure they, they can be cumbersome. Um, they can wiggle, uh, they can be problematic for somebody, if your front door getting more use and traction than it normally does. Um, so we just recommend keeping it simple, a simple swag and maybe two things on the side. Don't put the big Santa plastic Santa Claus picture on the front door um, this year um, that we just recommend keeping it simple with, you know, one wreath or something that is secure um, opening, you know, it's not going to fall off or anything like that. But yeah, again, keep it. it it's all the message of just keeping it simple, um, simple it's colors. Like simplicity. Yes, keeping it simple, simple colors, choose, don't do all the colors this year, just choose uh, silver and gold, or just choose two cups, colors to use through the house, because it keeps it, it keeps the flow of the house uh, simple, like you want. Okay, so recommendation is about two colors for, for the yeah. staging mostly. Two to three colors instead of all the colors all over the house. That's good advice. I think that really helps somebody to you know, have something to use as a measuring stick. Okay, like I have, you know, if I have all the colors under the rainbow, it's time for me to choose my top two or three that I have the most of decoration wise and then just use it sparingly just because right. you have a lot of, you know, stuff doesn't mean you have to use everything of one color. Correct, that is the message. So the other question I have is the holiday table. I don't know if it's because we watch a lot of HGTV, we're predetermined to just see, you know, the decorating that's done there. And then I see those tables with, you know, the, the plates and the, everything is set and done like for the big feast, but people live there. Like, what do you do? People have to live there. So if you regularly eat at your dining room table, don't set it and stage it. Uh, a lot of people eat in the kitchen and in a eat-in kitchen area, and then their dining room is set separate. I, uh, when we stage, we do tend to do a, the plate and the glass and some sort of fake food on the plate. Um, depends on the listing, of course. Um, a lot of times we just make sure we put a nice centerpiece. It can be Christmassy with um, just some greens and your other colors you're incorporating. And it just still, it boils down to keeping it simple and clean looking. I would love to see a set table with fake food. Like that would be we do. so cool. We use, we use a lot of pasta and beans. Interesting. Yes, yeah, to make it's fun. Yeah, I'd love to see a picture of that one. So I guess it kind of brings me to almost like a, a final question if you want, but must do or absolute no-nos when it comes to holiday staging. Like if you had to you know pick one thing 
that you tell a client, please do not do that, or please really consider doing this, which ones would those be? Well, it's really the idea of not getting everything you have out of the box and just keeping it simple because you have to celebrate Christmas while your house is on the market and there may be kids involved, there may not. Um, one thing we didn't touch on is, and I'm not anti-religion, but let's keep the religion, the religious piece out of it because you might distract from, you never know who's out there. So you just tone down, you don't put all the crosses out, put one in a corner if that's what you believe in or the creches or keep a tone down on the religion while you're selling the house and um, the iconic re that goes with it. Okay, now um, let's, let's elaborate on that just a little bit because, you know, religion and politics are two topics that we typically stay away from because they all, I know, right? They're always like, ah. But um, with all of that nativity scene, the most iconic, you know, thing for, for Christmas is typically a nativity scene. What's your take on that one? It's, um, you know, you can have the small one set up somewhere because you, it's part of your Christmas. Um, if it's a part of your Christmas, I, again, it goes back to the, keeping it simple. That's one thing you may not put out this year. Um, it might be a tradition and you don't care, then go ahead and put it out. There's no right or wrong. No. If you have to see it every day in December because it's part of your Christmas, go ahead and put it out. But we do want to just, you know, tone down the other stuff. And then you've got all kinds of families coming through. Um, with different religions, you don't want to minimize your house's appeal um, to that. So yeah, you can put the one over in the corner or on the piano or wherever you put stuff, um, but just you know, keep it toned down. Don't make it a big focus. You want people not looking at your stuff. You want them looking at the walls and the floors. That, right, because the Christmas tree at the end of the day is going to go back in the box and it's right. hopefully going to you know go with you. But um, if you put that nativity scene somewhere as well, you're taking counter space. And yes. um, you know, it's, it's something to keep in mind. We always say you wanna have the counter space there, right? Show it up, right. show it up. You put a counter space, clean lines, clean spaces, clean tables, don't fill up everything. But if you have to go right ahead and do it because it's part of your Christmas. If you have to do it, do it. I should just say, I'm like, it's not gonna make it or break it, but from an expert position, that's what this was. I mean, we're looking for the expert opinion in an ideal world, if you can be in charge and, you know, I know you guys work with your clients to what is their comfort level. So you're not coming in there saying you have to do this. It's always based on recommendations of what are the best practices and just that guidance is invaluable. But uh, that's awesome. I, I, Thank you. I don't even know what to say. There was so much value that I got from it, just getting your input on it. And then, like I said, knowing you are your own brokerage, knowing it's an in-house service for you guys. I think it's phenomenal. It works really well. It does bring us clients. I love that. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for hopping on. And um, again, any questions for Brian, make sure you drop them in the chat and we'll have your website. We'll drop it down below so people can check out what you do. My pleasure. Thank you so much for asking.